the practice and the environment made me come to a level where I became very comfortable with selling. So ICE started two and a half years back. Today ICE is at 2.2, 2.5 crores a month with 50%, 40% profits. Everyone has different skills. Someone can make billions using cooking and someone can't even make millions using sales, right? So then I created, sorry Amazon for this, but I created a certificate of cancer that is fake. <laughs> Himanshu, thank you so much for coming you, on this man. video and agreeing to do this. You. you are a 23 year old and you made 4 crores of profit in less than 3 hours. We'll talk about all of that in this video. But first of all, I want to start with your early days, yes. right? Tell me about your teenage life. What was your environment like? How did you drop out of college? There's so much to talk about in this video. But hey, lovely, man. Thank you for having me over here. Uh, it is lovely being on your podcast. I'll start off with the you know, childhood as we say of the journey. So lower middle class family, not a very good family, not a very rich family. Father, normal business, 20, 25,000 a month profit. Mother was a CA, but that turned into a housewife. So not very good conditions, right? But one thing happened that nice with me was I was in a very prestigious school because my father took a loan and got me into a very prestigious school. So the network I had around me for eight hours of the day was very prestigious and they have a different thought process, right? And the next 16 hours or whatever was a different thought process. That was the whole case, right? Ninth class, I'm reading, Zero to one, which that poor dad and all these books, other people are reading NCRTs, RD Sharmas. I never was into math, science, and all of that. In 12th boards, I studied for a long period, but I got 52%. So that tells my IQ. <laughs> that was the whole case. Not much more interested in like academics anymore, but more into key what else can be done from this thing. Right? So I was interested in sports, got national player in chess, all these things. But then the basically the journey started in 9th class, I started my first business, which was a photography business. And the business was, I didn't have a camera, my friend had. I'm like, I'll sell, you shoot. Cool. He's like, yes. And that time Facebook was, you know, coming up. So people were like, you know, I want to have a nice picture, profile picture and all of that, HD pictures. So we used to go charge like 300 bucks a photo, 200 bucks a photo, click photographs of students, 20, 30 make money and at that time you know as a kid of 9th 10th class i'm making like 30 40 thousand a month mm. right that's the case and it was a new taste for me because i make more than my father and my father is always telling me khud kamaoge to pata chalega right you have this kahawat in your home khud kamaoge to pata chalega and like it's not actually true because i have basically come to that level and it's not that difficult but it's like maybe you don't know things that you can do to get more money in the house or run your business smoothly anyways in 11th class i started an xbox renting business so whatever money i got i bought xbox and playstations with that and now we have shops near us which pay like 20 rupees 30 rupees per hour and you mm -hmm. play playstation for one hour two hour right so those are the shops at that time amazon emi was not possible so they cannot buy on emi mm. uh, the store owners and they need to pay rent salaries expenses everything so they don't have money surplus money to buy playstations i bought playstation rented them at 1500 a month 1600 a month the store was happy i'm happy because i'm getting passive income now mm. right in 10 months my playstation moved it out that was my brain that time Ki passive income kaise i can get using my brain right what can i do and then i bought a playstation then an xbox then a 360 then a xbox one and i kept on pushing things and i was starting to get a passive income of like 8000 9000 a month and i was like very like this is very cool but then the shop closed because i was pushing too many playstations and uh, the cash flow this was is not what year? This is like I'm in 11th class, mm -hmm. something. I'm 23 right now. I would not know the age by then, but it's like 11th class. Six, seven years ago about. Yeah, six, seven years, exactly, mm -hmm. right? In 12th, I got a little bit of serious. I started a cloth renting business and I want to make it scalable. So what I did was I bought a lot of expensive clothes from Amazon, Flipkart and all of those places. And what I used to do is I used to rent them. So the biggest thing for a teenager was to wear new clothes every month, right? Because they want to impress others. So what I used to do is I used to rent t-shirts. So I got a t-shirt from 300, then I used to rent it for like 300 a month. So you're happy. Then I took that t-shirt, try clean and do everything. Next person 300, next person 300, next person 300. Mm. And I was rotating clothes like this and like 11, 12 people. And with that only I was able to print like 30, 35,000. And I was very happy. Like for me, money was never a thing key. Oh, I'm not able to make it. This is very difficult, all of that. Because I'm only going in things where people are having a demand, mm. right? So it's automatically I'll make money. But then what happened was I tried to scale. And the moment I tried to scale, some people came from outside of cities to cloth rent and I'm like, oh my God, I'm expanding this. And three people took all the clothes and never came back. So the business went off <laughs> by night. So that was the destruction of the business. And then I developed an app, F-A-M-E-N-I-K, Famelik. It was a social media app that was anti-Facebook. So now I was like getting serious into startups, like valuation and I'm understanding things. You were building B-Real before B-Real was <laughs> Correct, correct, correct. So, 
I'm building all of that. I had a partner, his name is Himanshu Mishra. We coded the whole thing, built this thing, got investor, got a lot of users as well. The thing was going good, but our vision was not aligned. Mm -hmm. So he was thinking this direction, I was in this. So we left it off. Now, after all of that, we come again both and now start a new startup. So we were not talking for like three months, four months, and then came again back to launch something called Fib Hub, F I V H U B. That is a platform that is a story writing platform. So let's say I start off with the story of you know, a dragon lived in a den and then you continue the story mm. and then he continues the story. That's right. a Game of Thrones season 8 mm. and I continue the season 9 and I wrote one paragraph. So everyone can write one paragraph one day in one story. Now imagine the whole internet coming together to continue a story that is already famous on the internet. So that became a viral sensation because people are writing about Donald Trump ka wife ka pura chitha and what not, like everything on the internet. And it was very interesting to see because people have different perspectives, new stories, new beginnings, everything. So you can follow up stories, you can do all of that. So that platform went good. We even got bestsellers, authors to write on that platform and everything. And that is the age of, you can say, 19 around. Then again, we were not able to monetize. We tried ads, it was not able to monetize. We sold vouchers, not able to monetize. So like, we can't monetize this, there's no problem. Mm. There's no scope of this. We stopped this. And then I went to the corporate world. Ki, now you are about to start up, up. Let's go to the corporate world. Let's do a job. Be happy. So since I was in the startup world, I've developed enough skills that job was not a big deal for me because I'm handling like everything 24 into 7. Now here I need to work 8 hours to solve a simple problem. So it's not that difficult for me because I'm coming, I've been trained hard for this. So I joined a BPO. The salary was 12,000 rupees a mm, month. Right. Teleperformance was the name of the BPO. I went over there, worked easy work. Like it's nothing for me to do 150 calls. I'm doing 600 cold calls over there. <laughs> 150 calls, support calls is not a big deal for me. Did that, got promoted to phone pay. Phone pay may worked one month, got promoted to Flipkart. Flipkart may worked one month, got promoted to someone else. And this is about the whole case. And then I got to know about a job in Amazon. It's like where I live, Indore. It's a premium, most premium place. If you get a job over there, you're like settled. And nobody can get a job over there. So I'm like, why not? Let's go for an interview. So the walk-in happened. I went over there, 300 people, 270 people were in the interview. Three people got selected. Me, Satyam Jha, and I think Priyanka was the name of the third girl. The second person got selected because he copied my paper, as it is, right? So three people got selected. He just copied me. He's like never done a job in his life. And he's selecting directly in Amazon. And today also he works in Amazon, right? So he's like, I'll just copy yours. I'm like, just copy mine. You'll be done. So he just copies mine. We three get selected. I'm working in Amazon now. Big salary. You get a Zeta card. Uh, you get free Wi-Fi, USB, laptops at your home everything you can imagine of like the best job you can think of getting paid very well every six months a promotion would happen guaranteed all these things my family is like super happy but check us career settle awesome work done <laughs> everything end of story right but i was not feeling inside me that this is something i want to do so i started a digital marketing agency on the side and uh, india's biggest traveler was my client india's central biggest business coach was my client i was taking on clients doing work with them i was not providing results to be very honest but i was trying my best to be like key let me do some work at the end of the month whatever you want to pay me you pay mm -hmm. right so i'm not like i'll charge you this much only and this much right. fees and all of that i don't know how to get results i'll try this off you pay me whatever you think you feel thousand rupees you pay me thousand rupees i just want to test this out yeah. You seem to be very comfortable with selling, right? Like that's a skill that most people who are like Correct. in the twenties are very uncomfortable with, Correct. right? Like the idea of you know cold calling someone and Correct. selling something. Like I relate to this because when I was eighteen, I started like a podcast mentorship thing in which I had like a two month cohort in which I used to sell this podcasting thing, and I tried cold calling people, and that was a horrific <laughs> experience for me. I was like, "Kisi phone lagaunga, kisi ko hello, hello, kya koi chahiye?" But how do you learn this skill? How do you get better? That's a, a very good question. I'll tell you how did this happen. So Mossy, like my mother's sister, was into network marketing right and she was like printing money in network marketing she was making a lakh a day approximately and this is seven years back so seven years back lakh a day is like mm. it's like god, god for me right. because i have never seen money and all the luxuries i've seen is because of that right so selling is i think a game of two things the first is practice the second is environment the school i went into that school had the environment of all the rich kids and the father were excellent salesmen Right, that is coming to kids, and if I'm talking to them every day, I'm getting convinced for everything. Yeah, penthouse or party Saturday, I'm like, I don't have money, but I'm like, yes, I'm like, how did he convince me? Right, that thing goes in your mind because I'm in that school for like six years, so I'm like, how is this happening? Right, that was the case, and that's the environment. And secondly, it's practice. So, when I used to go for a week, like two months summer vacation that you tell to my Mossy's house, there they used to work and they used to sell on video calls, on phones, on one to one meetings, on group meetings, and seminars. I'm watching, I'm like, uh, nice. And whatever I see, I used to come home and in the mirror, nobody's there. So I'm practicing, 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 practicing because I'm liking that, you know, how you can talk to someone and persuade them to pay you three lakh rupees. How is that possible? So the practice and the environment made me come to a level where I became very comfortable with selling and I never took a negative relation with selling that selling is bad. Mm -hmm. Selling can create a problem and all this. 
I created a positive association with selling from the start, which was I need to sell to serve. People tend to attach their self worth to like how many projects they're able to close, there, right? They're right. like just one as mana kar diya tha, something bad. How do you go around that? It's a pendulum, right? Mm-hmm. So what most people think is, oh, I'm getting love, I'm so so cool. Oh, I'm getting hate, I'm so so bad. I'm like the love and hate are the result of the work that you have done, or the result of the work that people have seen, right? For example, I sometimes feel I've done a very good job. Like I'm a bad designer, very bad designer. Don't ever make me use Canva, that kind of designer. If I make a design and I'm like, wow, what a work I've done. But according to designs like Baker, like Worst, I would still feel proud inside me because I'm not looking for external validation. Mm. The problem with most people is the moment ten people say no, they take external validation. Oh, you rejected me, so now it's my self worth getting down. I never take it like that. I'm like, oh, you're rejecting this, so it means you're rejecting the product, not me. Mm. And if I associate that thing to something else, I would never feel something. And if someone buys, it's not you're buying from me; it's you're buying the product. It's never me. It's the product. It's the sales process. It's the sales script. It's not me. So I never attach it from the love side as well and from the hate side as well. If I'm putting out a YouTube video and if I've done mehnat on that, I feel like I've done best on that. It's maybe not the best for the world, but I have done my best. And if I get negative comments, it doesn't affect me. If it gets positive comments, it also doesn't affect me. Indifference, right? So it's like yeah, the emotional. I have the emotional mm-hmm. capability to understand. that i do not swing like a pendulum but i be calm and have a thera of mm. when i'm doing the work so that helps you know to handle the love and hate part let's go back to your story tell me about like how right. did you decide to drop out of college so i'm doing these jobs and all so before that the college started so the drop out thing happened because of fame nick so i told you about the app right i was in college what happened was my father and mother were like no you can't drop out obviously for obvious reasons and but i was like no i want to actually and let me prove my track record so all the business i did in the past i would have saved around 2.15 lakhs 2.3 lakhs something mm-hmm. so i had a sbi kiosk account a kiosk account is like sbi sbi branch sbi branch kiosk so they are very very small branches like this is a very big room according to that it's like this much gate branch you just come you transact and you go you can't mm-hmm. sit or do anything it's a kiosk branch so i went over there i was 18 and i'm like i want to open a bank account they're like cool you can open a bank account so whatever i used to make i just used to put little bit of money that there keep on putting money over there and when i'm putting money over there all the money accumulated in that much years because i didn't know ki passbook update karana hota hai that you can update a passbook and you can know that this much amount is now in your bank account and i'm like so how do i know the bank account details and how much amount i have and i went to the person and he's like you can update this i'm like update this so he's like i so first i took the checkbook okay how can i update a checkbook mm-hmm. passbook I'm like what's a passbook so i took the passbook over there i showed him he updated i'm like oh this one lakh now and now it's a you know positive loop because you saved for a little bit of time and you made money you're like this is a positive loop mm-hmm. so i did again and again and again so i've saved money i showed it to my parents this was money i have saved i know i can do business i'll take care of myself you don't take care so that's a track record the second thing is in the history of medicaps i have got the highest marks in the subject that i was trying to complete in the first semester and that was for my pain that you already know the stuff that they're talking about they're teaching you calculators in c language and you've already made an app so it's like there's a difference right so you mm-hmm. already know the thing you can drop out because you know the thing right so it's like your parents want to protect you they have intention of protection what you need to understand is that you have intention of liberation and now it's like you both are enemies now because they want to protect you want to liberate you need to come on the same side and understand that you are protecting yourself but from a different angle right because family will always think protection mm-hmm. like if i ask you that your kid is trying to drop out would you let him if he sleeps 11 hours a day if he's on his phone if he has a screen time of 8 hours would you let him your kid drop out you'd be like no Not, yeah. Right, but maybe the kid is trying to figure something out and wants to drop out. But if he does not have a track record, he cannot. Right, mm. you also drop out. What is your? My story was that for the past two years, when I was in my house, pandemic, की वजह से my parents were seeing me doing the work every single day. Right, so they two बजे उठे रात को they were looking at me. I was editing a reel, editing a video. Right, so I was obsessed with this game. Got it. They were like, कुछ ना कुछ कर लेगा. Uh, right? so that's why they built it. trust yeah. over two years to a point at which I just called my dad and I was like, की हाँ, oh, bits come and let's just go back. So that's how my story happened. I think completely agree with your point as well. Yeah. Right. So this thing happened. Then Amazon guy was doing the job. I was having a agency and then I started drop shipping. So there's a person called Ritu Bhan. I don't know if he exists right now or not. And there's a playlist of his which is how to start drop shipping. I'm like, try it out. So I used to see the YouTube video, applied. YouTube video, applied. I started making like eighteen thousand, twenty thousand a month, right? First month I made eight thousand, like ten thousand, then eighteen, twenty thousand, and then I was not able to scale it after that because I didn't knew how to do that. Anyways, so I'm making eighteen, twenty thousand a month, and that's where the point 
changed. So the two guys, Pranay and Satyam, they came to me and they're like, hey, this stock thing is making you money. I'm like, yes. They're like, how much? I'm like, 18, 20,000. You see it? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Can you show? I'm like, this is the proof. They're like, okay. And they asked me a question that changed my perspective on business after that. And that's where I became consultant. So they asked me, would you teach us? I'm like, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. I'll teach you. No problem. And the question they asked after that was, how much would you charge? And that was a eureka moment for me because I'm like, actually, yes, I know something. You want to learn that. I can charge for that. Mm. And just out of confidence, I said 5,000. Mm. They're like, cool, per person or both? And I'm like, per person. Cool. You took out little 1,000 rupees paid. I'm like, I'll pay you tomorrow. Let's start from tomorrow. And I'm having 1,000 bucks in my hand. I'm thinking, for the whole month, I work three hours a day to get this 18,000. I need to put now six hours, but I'm paid 10,000 for that. And this is pure profit. Right. And that flicked and changed everything I think about like in business terms because I'm like, oh shit, highest margins possible, very less work, service can be very fast because it's a digital product and this is like amazing. And I love this. I love to speak. I love to talk. I love to teach. I'm like, awesome. And now the calculations are in. I got two people right now. I've got 10,000. If I get 20, I'll make one lakh. Right. Nice. <laughs> and the moment I got that match, I'm like, Amazon, I want to leave. You can't leave because it's a six month probation. I'm like, mm. shit. I got jaundice. You can't leave. I'll give you a break of one month, but you can't leave. So then I created, sorry, Amazon for this, but I created a certificate of cancer that is fake <laughs> again on Canva and send it to Amazon saying I've got cancer. So they're like, lots oh, of fake stuff being created on Canva. <laughs> Melanie Perkins, you're watching this. <laughs> so yeah, I did that. I sent to Amazon. They said bye bye. So I left Amazon while I was teaching them drop shipping and making that 10,000. That person said, Hey, I have a person in Indore. His name is Jitesh Panwani. Mm -hmm. You might have seen his ads, right? That person is a business coach. At that time, he was making one and a half, two lakhs, right? Offline business coaching. I'm like, cool. I met that person. He was like, he explained me, what do you do? Explain me on the board. He's like, you're good at Facebook ads and all these things. I'm like, yes. And then I got to know he made around three lakh rupees in six hours. I'm like, this is something unusual. What is this three lakh in six hours? And then I understood, oh, three people paid one lakh rupees after six hours. I'm like, I'm going to pay 10,000 for six hours. This person made three lakhs for six hours. Mm. What is he doing? And the moment that thing got in my head, I'm like, I want to work with you. He's like, I can't pay you much. I'm like, totally fine. So he used to pay me 6,000 a month. I used to work 14 hours in his office. Every single day I did for 10 months. And that is where I got referred to coaching industry. Now I get to know about the person like, oh, Russell Brunson is a person. Hai. Oh, ClickFunds is software. Hota hai. Oh, get response. Kuch hota hai. Oh, uh, webinars. Kar sakte. Oh, three-day events. Hote hai. Oh, offline alag hota, online. Alag hota hai. Mm. Now I'm getting in the industry and knowing things. From 800 calls to a day to copywriting to landing page to email writing to cold emails to ads to selling on ads to doing everything you can imagine i did that for 10 months and after 10 months i started ice because the vision was if this person i can get his business from one and a half lakh to three four lakhs then i can do that for other people as well and if i can do it more people i'll be paid more i'm getting paid six over a year i can charge a little bit more and i can do that for more people so i can make more and the biggest reason after that was if i know that ishan knows freelancing and can teach freelancing to let's say 100 people in his lifetime and 100 freelancers are born or 100 people can increase their income or per capita or whatever. If I can create 10,000 Ishans who know this thing and can teach other people, it's a ripple effect. Mm. And that's where the vision, if you ask my team member, investor, or customer, anyone, and if you ask them what's Himanshu's vision, they'll all tell you only one thing. It's $5 trillion economy of India, right? Because I believe that we are as hardworking and as skilled as other countries. And we can also be getting paid and have the rupee ka value that much. Mm. And for that, we need to increase the per capita and the GDP and everything. So the game was to create a $5 trillion economy. And to get that done, it's only possible through education and through entrepreneurs. So education plus entrepreneurs is ed tech. And that's where the ed tech is gone. And now I'm like, how can I expand this? First month, I would have made 30,000 rupees. I used to sell 6,000, 7,000 rupees course over phone. And for me, at that time, 15,000 was high ticket. Mm. If I sell a 15,000, I'm like, whoa, closer. <laughs> Jordan Belfort. Like, that was the feeling. You know? 15,000 thing was like, oh my God, today I've done really big work. Right. right? Because it's it's big money for me because I'm working for the whole month and then making 6,000. And then over a call, a person says, for your two hours, I'll pay 15,000. I'm like, what? <laughs> so it just changes your perspective. So things started to work out, work out, work out. And then again, I got a dip. I left the business. I went for a job, collected some money, came back to business, started put money back into this, scaled again. I would have lost around 10, 15 lakhs into agencies, Facebook ad agency, YouTube agency, all these agencies, because they promised we'll give you these many customers. No one came. Right. So I burnt money, burnt money, burnt money, test and try, test and try, test and try. But after that, I got a person who knew the ads very well. He started the ads. We started to scale. Right now, if you 
want to ask the numbers if the companies so ic started two and a half years back today ic is at 2.2 2.5 crores a month with 50% 40% profits the second company that started nine months back is back and closes it's a sales agency 170 employees 25 lakhs approximately the revenue 50% profits 170 people are commission basis not salary basis and the third company is a software company three softwares are launched making money five more are yet to launch it's a suit of eight softwares that we are planning for the industry so these three companies started three of them are automated because i have ceos who handle those companies and i don't work in those anymore mm-hmm. they take the decision they do everything i just train the ceos i just talk to the ceos and that's how the whole thing works very interesting so you are in the high ticket business right yes. most of the people who are knowledge workers freelancers they are into this rat race they go on to fiverr they look at a gig they look at a buyer request and then they are in this constant race of you know how much can you offer it for how can someone offer it for lesser how can they transfer from that because many of the people that message me they're like hey i can only make like 10 20000 rupees per month as a freelancer while the dream that you sold me on youtube and other places <laughs> is like you can make a lakh a month cheating karta hai to and you've proven that you can make a lot more than that and so have me how did you transfer how would you advise someone to transition from this low ticket business to this high ticket model in which they can charge a lot more for services that they offer so this is a difference between the commodity and a result right mm-hmm. For example, if I see Ishan Sharma as Ishan Sharma, uh, can you do my podcast? Right now, Ishan Sharma can say two things. First, yes, I can do your podcast. I'll charge this much. We'll do this and we'll do this. I'll do this and feature and benefit and maximum there. The second thing is Ishan would be like, okay, what are you planning? Ishan, you know what? I want to start building my brand. You know what? This will be the best step to build your brand. This is what I'll do. There's a difference between the, those two things. Now I'm getting a result. Earlier you were a commodity because mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, Ishan, now I'll compete Ishan with blah 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 blah. Right? And if I'm doing that thing, it's it's a commodity game. And if you are in the commodity game, you are just getting compared. So if six freelancers are sitting over there and I ask who's the graphic designer, three of them raise a hand, and I'm like, I want a logo, and they just quote their prices. Everyone is a commodity. I'm now just comparing on price mm-hmm. because I have only one data point. Exactly. But the moment they say, oh, I want to provide you. this result now they i'm comparing them on a result basis so you say that you can build this in this much time just before this podcast we are having conversation and you said you know we do marketing for xyz mm-hmm. company that xyz company is looking for the result not for the commodity or the features or the benefits right mm-hmm. because that can anybody can give any freelancer can give right and when you can do that you can charge high ticket because now you are giving a result so result ka value is much more higher than commodity ka mm. and when result ka value is higher that is it is 10 lakhs now you can charge 1 lakh yeah. and people will pay right. but commodity ka is like 60000 value you can't charge 60000 50000 you need to charge 5000 6000 because the person needs to feel i got 10x value from it so essentially when you help your client make 10 crores it's a lot easier for you to charge a crore for them correct so i'll give you example recently one of my clients webinar consultations right most people do webinar consultation in india they charge 50000 1 lakh or 1.5 lakhs that client till now would have paid me if i'm not wrong 18 lakh rupees mm-hmm. and you like what and by the way that client makes 5 lakhs a month how a person making 5 lakhs a month would pay you 18 lakhs do they charge in royalties mm. the one more thing about high ticket is if you are selling results you need to know how to provide results if you are someone who just sells results but is not able to give the result there's no sense in moving forward right the point is that i went to the person i'm like i'll charge 15 lakhs for this webinar and like i'll not pay 15 lakhs obviously i'm like okay your wish there are two choices you can go with either you pay 15 lakh right now and i pay for your webinar and in a whole year you'll make this much or you pay me 3% royalty on the whole webinar you do for your life the person thought i cannot provide results and he went for 3% thing right till now i made 18 lakhs and in future i'll make till 50 lakhs Hmm. from a single person but how do you get better at creating these results for people i think it's a game of only three things first consumption second practice and third environment right first consumption that means how much are you consuming about the particular thing right so if i want to learn about cameras i need to consume everything about cameras who is the best creator who is the worst creator what is working in the industry what people like what people don't like how the camera work what is ios right. everything right hmm. that's a consumption part second is practice consuming enough is not enough So I've read the books, I've read, heard the podcast, I've seen the YouTube videos, I've bought the courses, but that's just consumption, not into practice. So whatever I learn, I just practice. Oh, I so if I increase, oh this much, oh this much, oh this much. If I do webinars, oh what if I say this word? Oh what if I say this line? Oh high ticket sales script? Oh what if I say instead of this this? What if I change the sequence? That's practice. Mm. And the more you practice, the more your muscle memory increases, right? And the third thing is environment. Who am I surrounded with? If you are surrounded with people who hate sales and you want to become a high ticket loser, it's impossible for you. Even if you consume and practice, either you'll change. in the circle or circle will change you right so if the five people don't like selling either they will convince you that hey sales is bad do not do this you are on the wrong move or you will convince all of them that hey i am not part of this let's move let's part our ways right so only two things would happen in that case absolutely so imanshu you are just 23 and you have accomplished a lot what are the skills that helped you get here 
like first of all we talked about sales and how did you get better at sales result oriented you know focus that you have what other skills do you think that if a 20 year old person can get that can help them achieve a lot if they are like in the knowledge industry so i can give you like specific skill sets but i would like to explain a concept so that the skills you can choose yourself right because the question is oh you say that copywriting is a good skill but copyright is getting replaced by ai so is that correct or not so i'll give you a framework to think so that you can choose your skills right because everyone has different skills someone can make billions using cooking and someone can't even make millions using sales right so it's like is it different so the framework i use is of leverage now there are four levels of leverage, right? The first level of leverage is labor. Now you need to understand that if you are going to provide value to the marketplace, at the labor level of leverage, what can you maximize on? So I know that if I have a lot of salesmen, I can make a lot of sales. Mm -hmm. Common sense, right? So I can leverage labor over there. So sales becomes an important skill. If I have a lot of direct response people, right, means who are outreaching on social media or emails or multiple places, then it becomes an important skill. So outreach is one of the skills that you should have so that at least you can go to people, talk to them and sell to them, right? The second level of leverage is capital, right? Capital is about how you can allocate your capital in different ways to create more value and create the maximum value. Now, when I say that, understanding how markets work, right? So market economics is one of the skills you need to have, mm. right? Then once that is understood, understanding things like cash flow, understanding things like accounts and finance, those becomes important skill for an entrepreneur. I'm talking just from an entrepreneur perspective, right? So finance and accounting becomes an important skill because that's how you leverage the game of capital, right? Above capital, that comes media, right? So media is the third highest form of leverage because if you're making a video right now, this video can be used for next 20 years mm -hmm. in different way, shape and form, right? So me putting one hour, but getting leverage of 20 years, very good leverage, right? So speaking on videos, speaking on stages, talking people on video call and not being a shy person or not able to talk to a camera, talking to one-on-one -on -one as people, talking to one too many people, right? Webinars or workshops. These are the skills that becomes important over there. That's the second highest level of leverage. The highest level of leverage is called as code, which is if I make today, putting six hours, Zomato-like thing, it can be scaled to billions of people used by billions of hours for millions of years. Mm -hmm. Right? because I just put six hours. So it's the maximum leverage because I put this much hour, but that can get the maximum value, right? In the shortest time possible. So coding then becomes a very important skill. Knowing about how does a code, not like doing coding, but also how code works becomes an important skill, right? So these are different forms of leverage. Now you need to see where you are, right? Now understand this, that everything is a pyramid, right? So it goes like this, highest is code, lowest labor. Now, when I say, if you are a coder and you're becoming happy, oh, I am a coder. So this person is telling I'll become successful. No, you do have all forms of leverage. If you're a very good coder, but you can't sell your thing, forget that you'll exist. Talent stacking. Exactly. Stack your talent, right. skills. Right, you stack your skills, you stack your talent, exactly as you say. So if you're a coder and you can outreach and hire a team member, forget about it, mm -hmm. right? So if you are a coder, but you don't know how to allocate your capital in your business, forget about it. So it's not like Zuckerberg is a good coder. That's why Facebook is here. Zuckerberg is a good coder and a good leader and a good salesman and a good marketer which brought him over here. Mm -hmm. Maybe coding is the thing that he's very good at and there's some things he's not so good at, but it's a stack of skills and stack of talent that has got him over here. Right. So it's like uh, pie-shaped learning. Right. Like two things right. that you master in. Then right. Like right. things that you know a few about. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Right. You talked about outreaching, right? And a lot of things revolve around cold emailing people. And uh, sadly, most people suck at it, right? So what's like your ideal cold email template or format that you think converts the best? Right. I'll give you three tips and then the structure I use, right? So the first tip is subject lines, right? Because if your open is your email is not getting opened, forget about anything else, right? That's the first thing, subject line. What for subject lines I do? First, I use capitalization and non-capitalization. So for example, I'll Jan Puchke put one word as capital so that it just pulls, pulls up our attention, right? Mm -hmm. it just like it's a mistake. For example, I'm doing the, so T small and H capital, not T capital, H small. So it just pulls up attention. Second, I'll use emojis. Third, I'll use name of the person or company name or something, right? That's for subject lines. Mm -hmm. Now we come to content. Now the second tip for cold emailing would be either play huge, huge, huge mass bulk game or play very, 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 very personalized game. So either send 10 cold emails a day or send 10,000. There's nothing in between. I don't understand the game of 200, 300 cold emails a day. Because you're being personalized, but not being personalized. You're going bulk, but not bulk. Mm, right. So play on the extremes. Either go like you are bulking, where you're like, hey, name, template. And you play the 10,000 game, that also works. Or you go super personal and you send 10 emails a day. That's it. Because each email would be so personal that it would contain a video. It would contain screenshots of their website. It would contain screenshots of the email their website is sent. Notification that is coming, right? Multiple things. It is that personalized, mm -hmm. but it is like very bulk. 
Mm. Right? Those two would be playing the best. In between, I've not seen work for me. It may work out for you, but not for me. It has worked till now. Right? Not for my clients. So that's the second thing I would say. The third thing is have an email signature and least number of links possible in the whole email. Right? So look for a reply in the email, not like, hey, I want to talk about this or yes, let's talk about this, something like this, rather than give a calendar link or a calendar page or something like that. Because mm. the more links you have in the email, the less the delivery rate. Right. So if you send me 100 emails, you're thinking 100 are landing. No. 70 are landing in which you get whatever your 10% open rate and 1% click rate right so if you play on this list the 30 emails that were left you can actually leverage out in a long period because in a month those 30 becomes 900 mm. and those 900 means new three clients Makes sense. right so these are three tips now what the format i use the format is simply like hey first thing i got to know about dash company which does dash 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 and recently you achieved you closed you onboarded some big thing, right? And how do you get this done? So you basically use LinkedIn, LinkedIn pay everyone updates. This YouTube it, you'll find a lot of videos which tells you about how do you personalize this thing on like automation. When that is done, I made a video for you that explains this video link. I'm talking about personalized right now. I'll tell you about bulk, this personalized video link, right? Here are some screenshots that I found on your website and multiple places, which I think can be worked upon. Mm -hmm. Screenshot with arrows that yeah. this thing used to work, this to be work, this to be work, right? And for that, you can use any software. Just Google it out. Multiple screenshots. At the end, would like to talk to you about this. Let me know if you're interested. Mm -hmm. Right? If the person does not reply, follow up on the same email. Just so re dot dot subject line. Use the same thing and be like, just want to take an update on this. If you don't want to work, just reply. Don't want to work. That is totally fine with me. So that I don't follow up and we don't waste each other time. Right. Simply, simply like this. Very professional. Mm -hmm. Right? If you're going for the bulk, very simple game. Hey, first name or hey company name i saw that you have been doing this i help dash to dash by dash so i help restaurants to increase their bookings by cold emailing i help hotels to get more wedding clients using facebook ads mm. whatever i help dash to dash by dash if you are interested in something like this reply to this email or click this link when you're going for bulk or something like this right reply for email works the best Click for the link, reduces delivery rate. So reply to this back to this email. I would love to come on a 20 minute call, explain the whole strategy. If that works out for us, we'll move forward. Thank you so much. Bye bye. See you. Mm -hmm. That's a whole email for bulk. That's a whole email for personalized. And I send that and I made pretty good money. Like, <laughs> with cold emails. <laughs> Absolutely. I think cold email has helped me out as well for all the people I've gotten on my channel, for all the clients that we have at Market Up as well. But you know, let's talk about GPT 4 that was recently launched. What are your thoughts on it? Every single day we are seeing new AI tools come up on the surface and we did not expect that it would target the creative industry, but that is the first industry it went towards. Designers, all of the work that we used to do as knowledge workers are now being done by AI tools. So what do you think about this? Where does the future lie for people who are in this creative field? So creators are three types, right? Creator, text, creator, audio and creator video. I take in three categories. You are a creator video, mm -hmm. right? Someone who's a podcast is a creator audio. And someone who's uh, writing blogs and all is a creator text, right? So some people only have Twitter accounts, nothing else. They just write and they're following. Mm. You make videos, you are following. Someone just does podcasts and uses the voice and they were following. Now, I think creator video and creator audio are not going anywhere because I like the flavor of Ishan, not the content Ishan is saying. So there's a difference between shake and banana shake. Mm. It's not the shake I'm trying to have. It's the banana flavor with the shake I like to have. Right. Right. So when I see video of Ishan, it's not text. So it's having a flavor of Ishan, mm -hmm. right? So when Ishan says this thing in this way, I understand better. When Himanshu says this thing in this way, I understand better. So video and audio is not going anywhere, but text is in danger. Mm -hmm. Why? Because text does not have flavor and chat GPT can produce that flavor. You can obviously, you know, use jokes in text and do all of that, but to a certain extent, not to very high limits that you can do in video and audio. So text is in danger right now, according to me. Now GPT-4 has come. Now it's like they're getting in video and audio as well. So what's your thought on that? I think any AI thing that starts off or does anything, start with analyzing things and more of organizing things and all of that. And then comes to creation, right? They don't start off with creation. GPT-4 has come. It is more on analyzing, optimizing all these things, mm -hmm. right? So what I'm using GPT-4 right now for analyzing ads. So I put a lot of ads over there and I want to see what does this replies. What's the best performing ad on the planet till now? Mm -hmm. I will put that. Recently, Five Star launched this ad. I'll put it there to see what happens, right? I'm analyzing ads. What I'm understanding is it's trying to optimize on things that are very natural. When I put ads, ads is like I'm trying to segment a market, right? I'm trying to play with the psychology of a big chunk of people. Can you analyze that? Can you play on mass psychology? Yeah. Or can you play on data that you have or you can give it that and just give that data to me, right? Yeah. So that's what the game is. I think it would soon get into videos. There's a tool called as podcast.ai yes. and in that they basically had 
Joe Rogan and Steve Jobs talk yes. for about 10 to 20 minutes. Hello, freak bitches. Welcome to another episode of the Bro Jogan Experience. Yes, and that, that was very really fascinating. Yes. And so we were moving into this world in which we don't know if something is real or fake just because right. AI is getting so good. So correct. I don't know what's going to happen correct. in the future. Correct. Correct. <laughs> correct. I think that leads to a lot of security breaches and multiple things that can happen. Government, I think, would enter into this very soon yeah. to try to put some compliances or do some things. Mm -hmm. For example, drones. When drones came into the world, Everyone is using drones to do everything, but then it led to security things, right? So now in India, at least you need to take permission from your local police station to use a drone in an area, right? So I think compliances would start to come and then security would not be a problem. But anyways, it's internet, so can't promise anything. <laughs> How do you keep yourself up to date? How do you keep learning everything every other day? Because, you know, most people struggle with this thing, like how to be up with the latest trends and learn the latest things out there? I think it's team, right? So earlier I used to just keep on researching, right? Product hunt, this and that, and uh, indie Hacker hackers news. and <laughs> like GitHub, everywhere, right? Just keep on taking news. But after that time, it's not sustainable because it's too much anxiety for my brain. Mm. Now I play the CEO game. So I know I have three CEOs. They have their whole employee structure and everything, right? Now the employees would be telling up, oh, GPT-4i, GPT-4i, GPT-4i. And the information I will get from the CEOs is very refined. Mm. GPT-4 has come, it is an extension of this, this is the language used, we can use it for this. I'm like, that is what I want to know, not GPT-4i. Right. Right? Oh, chat GPT has come and you can do this, this is too much information. Mm. What can we do? So it refines through multiple systems and then every two, three days when I'm sitting with the CEOs, I'm like, what's the new update? They're like, you know what, copyright is using GPT. I'm like, mm. what's the GPT? And they tell me in detail, I'm like, cool. And if I found the topic interesting, I research about it on the internet, according to me, and try to get insights as much as I can. Plus, recently I've hired an R&D guy and the work of the R&D guy is to find trends. Mm. Now, the reason to find trends is not to make videos or do all of that. But I know if something is trending, it is something that is a high demand in the marketplace. If something is high demand, it is low CPA and low CPM on Facebook and YouTube. I can run ads and sell that. Mm. So, recently I launched a product on ZGPT. Right. Worked wonderfully well, mm. right? A lot of profits. Why? Because it's trending. People want to learn and they don't have information. And if I can have speed, which is one of the philosophies of business I have, I can use ChatGPT. Learn it, create something out of it. Maybe it's of 100 rupees value, right? But I can create something out of it, create a landing page, put the product over there, start selling it, right? So that helps me with the R&D. Mm -hmm. What does your day in the life look like? Very bad. Uh, <laughs> and the reason I would say so is because I don't have normal habits that normal entrepreneurs have. And everyone this in this room is laughing is because of the reason they know my routine. So any normal custom that you see in the entrepreneurship world, wake up at 5 a.m., meditate, yoga, drink coffee, sit for work, do this, clean space, all of that. I have never done all of that in my life. I wake up around 11, sometimes 12. I just straight go to my computer. I start working. When I get exhausted, I go for eat. So I don't do breakfast. I do very mild lunch. I do heavy dinner, mm. right? I'll not say it's dinner. It's like around six, seven, I'll have very heavy thing. I eat something a little bit at nine. And then I'm like empty stomach for a long period of time. That is till night three, four. And then like I'll wake up at 11, 12, right? So that's how it looks like. I just go to work. When I feel I'm hungry, I just go for eating. After eating, I like feel a little bit of like instant energy. So I don't use that on work because I'm like, that's distracted work. I just go out for a walk, go with my friends, do something, read a book, anything. Instant energy you use clinically. Then I'll get again in a focused environment, which is like, now I'm like stable. I'm not like this, I'm stable. Then I can get to work. Keep on working, keep on working, keep on working. Once I'm again exhausted, then I start my meeting routine, right? So all my meetings that you would see are after 7 p.m., after 8 p.m. Before that, it's my working time, right? So right now I'm working, it's my work time. After 7, 8, my meetings would start. So team meetings, CEO meetings, investor meetings, vendor meetings, any meeting that would be after 7 p.m., 8 p.m., right? And everyone is accustomed to that because they close their office at that time. I'm like, I'll start my office at that time. <laughs> So the people who are working with me are accustomed. Obviously, there are some changes in some times and some people are not compatible. So that time I'll do like around 2, 3 or morning 11, 12, something like that. The meetings would go till 11, 12. 12 is my focus zone. Like after 12, I get into like very focused meditative work. So 12 to 4, 3, I'll work like, I'll you just complete the, one week. US yes, time zone. <laughs> correct. I'll just complete the whole week work in like 3, 4 hours. Right. Right. And then 4 around, I feel like very exhausted. 3, 4, I'll sleep. And then again, 11. Mm -hmm. That's how it looks like. What's the message that you have to the people who are watching this video right now? Like they're at the end of this video and they are mostly young and they are, you know, filled with enthusiasm, energy, and they just went into college. They are clueless about what to do with their life. Okay. The thing that changed my life if I look for the whole thing and I'd be like, what is the one point that changed like the whole trajectory? That would be getting to someone who is already at the position you want to reach. Mm -hmm. 
right? So my advice would be if you're in college, if you're anywhere in the world, just find a person nearby you. I don't want to say keep find a billionaire, right? You don't want to become a billionaire next year. Just find a person who is like at the place after one year you want to reach. Just reach out to the person and put your whole hearted effort into helping that person. And if you can do that, and if you can provide value to that person, that person will open his networks, will open his knowledge, will open his contacts, will open mm-hmm. his multiple things that are very useful to you. Mm-hmm. That is what I did. I got to a person, a business coach in Indore. He opened his networks. He sent me to his BNI chapter. Why would someone miss send an intern to his BNI chapter? Because I'm providing value. Like, you What's know what? that exactly? BNI. So BNI is a business networking international, right? Mm-hmm. What happens is a group of 30 people are selected in multiple chapters. So let's say we have Bengaluru. Mm-hmm. Bengaluru will have 12 chapters. Each chapter will have around 30 to 40 people on an average. Each person would be from a different industry. And the work of the BNI is to give reference. Mm-hmm. So Ishan is a content creator. I'm a business consultant. He's a photographer. He's a videographer. She is a media agent. Now we five come over here and every week we'll meet on Sunday as Friday or some point in the morning from 6 to 8, 6 to 9 and the only work of that room is to share referrals. Mm. So Ishan would be like, hey, video wala, I have three referrals. Hey, photo, I have five. Hey, media, I have five. Hey, consult, I have six. Right. I would be like, hey, Ishan, six, eight, one, four. Mm. And we are just providing referrals to each other. Mm. And next week we meet and do that again. That's right. BNI, right? Mm. So you used to send me over there. Now I'm going over there and I'm like, sir has sent these all reference to all you people. And now they're like, who are you? <laughs> I tell out myself. Right. Nice. Give me a number. Mm. Number exchange. Let's connect on Facebook. Let's connect on Instagram. Cool. Let's talk about this. Right. Now we are talking on Instagram, replying to each other's stories. That's a network of 30 people I have who are the biggest in Indore. Because BNI is expensive, a little bit expensive. So only the top people go over there. So now I'm in contact with 30 people in different industries who are top of the game. Mm. So there was a finance guy. I'm talking to them. Hey, you know what? I'm trying to do this thing, but I'm not able to manage. He's like, use a credit card while running ads so that you save money on credit cards and you can use credit to get points. I'm like, oh, nice. <laughs> now use that thing over there, right? So it's like network, open a bigger network, which gives me knowledge in like multiple ways, shape and form. Awesome. At the end of this, let's do a quick rapid round with Himanshu. So let's start with the first question. You can quickly answer them and then we'll move to the next one. Done. First is, what is the one book that has helped you the most? Almanac of Naval Ravi Kant. And why? The reason is, you take any page, any paragraph, any line, it's a mind blow. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it just changes your perspective on money. Uh-huh. Niche or broad market? Broad markets. Why is that? In broad markets, you can do multiple errors. Your margin would be less, but uh, since you're a broad market, you can scale faster. And if your average order value is high, you can make longer money on the same customer. So riches are not in the niches? I don't think so. They are. But for not for the long term, for a short term period. What's a podcast that you really enjoy? I enjoy Joe Rogan a lot. I listen to some people. I'll not say I'm a very big fan or continuous watching that. Someone comes that I feel is a good guest. I watch that. Mm. No fab or no? <laughs> no, 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 nothing at all. I, I am just against this concept of you trying to sell this thing to a person who's making 20,000 a month and being like, this would change your life. I'm like, no, it would not. Skills would. <laughs> <laughs> Very interesting. Work from home or work from office? Higher level leadership, work from office. Lower level leadership, work from home. Mm-hmm. Tech or uh, agency? Tech. And why is that? Scalability plus we have higher leverage. As we talk about media and code, mm-hmm. that comes with tech, not agency. Labor and capital is agency. Who is the one entrepreneur that you look up to the most? I look up to Naval Ravikant because he has balanced everything. One more entrepreneur that I look to and I try to think like is Steve Jobs. Money or power? <laughs> Good one. <laughs> I would say money. Mm. If you had 10,000 rupees in your pocket right now, what's the one business would you start? Agency. Interesting. So, Imanshu, what else would you want people to tell? Do you want people to ch- check out any links of yours in the description? I would not like to put any links in the description because I'm here to just provide value. Take value, leave home, enjoy the thing, take action on that because the link would create a FOMO in their head. Oh, I did not click over there. That's why I can't get the result. <laughs> Use the value, get your home. If you want some support, uh, you see my ads anywhere, click on them, enjoy. Great. Awesome. Thank, you so much. Much. Thank you so much for taking out the time. Guys, what is the one thing that you learned from this whole conversation? Let us know in the comment section and you can click a picture, a screenshot of us and you can post it on your social and share the one learning that you had. You can tag both of us. Thank you so much for watching. You can also catch with us on social media. You have our handles in the description and we'll see you in the next video. Awesome.